Hallelujah. God, you are worthy of all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. There is none like unto you. Hallelujah. Oh, what a wonderful time in the presence of God. Amen. Kingdom greetings to my global family. Kingdom Restoration International, a special one is going out to you. I truly thank God for all that he has done and all that he is doing. And coming on the heels of the rise of the remnant and what God has said and what he continues to say to us. Last time we looked at preparedness and uh, how we are conditioned to triumph. And I know you might be expecting part two, but part two will have to come after this interjection. <laughs> uh, God kind of shifted up things uh, for me and uh, he wants me to talk to you about salt. So this, the subject today is salt, and the objective is I am essential. I am essential. Salt, sanctified, anointed, loved, and trusted. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, well, I think by now we can see clearly that there has been a swift global shift do you realize that most of the jobs that you went to school to study for, and for years you are now in a position where the jobs are becoming obsolete. You have uh, to compete with the revelation of the AI industry. Artificial intelligence is calling for a new type of skill set. The human intelligence is being replaced with AI. Your employability is being questioned. You are intelligent, but you don't have the skills. Could you imagine that? Imagine your degrees are becoming obsolete. You must acquire the skills to work or effectively function in this new era. You must now. So you have to re recalibrate. You have to shift. You have to go now and do things that you've never done before after studying for years. The shift has taken place. That's right. That's right. What have you done to align yourself in this new era? What have you been conditioned to do? And how have you been conditioned uh, is now being remodeled. How you were conditioned before is now being remodeled. The world is telling you that's not what we really meant. That's not what we really wanted. We want this particular thing. We thought by steering you down a certain pathway, you would have ended up a certain place. But now we realize there are some kinks in there, so we want to remodel. In this new age, there is a new age conditioning. There's a resetting. The resetting is happening even as I speak. There are those in the midst who are legislating for a new world order and a new world. They went, um, they, 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 they gathered together. Listen, they want a world that can condition or can be conditioned and controlled. There are some popular terms being quoted and they are as follows. We are talking about things like the Great Reset, building a better world, re-imaging, one world order, one economic forum, that's the WEF. Then we have a secret cabal, talking about a secret society. And then we have one world government, and that's just to name a few. So these terms are being repeated so that the minds of all the humans can align to that and begin to feed. That's why they would show so many advertisements. You will see billboards. You will see all the different channels on television. They will have things and they will repeat it. If they want you to purchase something, they will repeat and add. Because that's what happens when you repeat things. Another change that we can quite... Well, you, you might not be able to tell that they have done this, but if you do research, you will see in dictionary.com, dictionary.com has added more than 300 new words to its dictionary. And here it was, I went to school and I thought, well, the dictionary was the dictionary and that was the end of words. And then more than 1,000 new words 
senses and sub-entries have been added to the Oxford English Dictionary. I remember my mother purchasing an Oxford Dictionary for me. And over 1,000 words have been added. They have also made some words obsolete. So who is telling us what to do? What, what do we believe? Things have changed and continue to change. But the word of God still remains the same. If you don't know what to believe, check the word of God. It has never changed. J Jesus himself, hallelujah, will never change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. They are just changing up things. Adding new words. Adding new concepts. Telling you it's okay. For a male to marry a male, it's okay. For a female to marry a female. I saw something that messed with my mind a bit. This man, well, this woman who is now a transgender, um, got pregnant. So the child was born. So the child is going to be calling his mother, daddy, and his uh, father, mommy. So the father stood there looking like a woman, encouraging the birth process of her husband which is the mother of the child but he's the man y'all got it so far so this child is going to grow up looking nursing from his mother and saying dada and they are trying and this is not something that is fake there was an interview and she really looks like a he because, well, you know, I don't want to go on with that. It just messed with, I was like, my God, look at what is taking place. And how they are conditioning the children. They are after the children. They know they, are, they have already gotten a lot of adults, but they are after the children. They are trying to condition the children. You have to guard your children. Guard them with everything inside of you and declare that they are covered by the blood of Jesus. Chosen stewards, kingdom citizens, you are required to be observant so you can teach others to observe all things that God commanded. You have to know what he, he uh, author, uh, authorized or what is... Uh, authentic and what is real what he ordered and you have to know that once you get to know that you are able to teach Matthew 28 19 let's go there it says go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit teaching them to observe all things that i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even to the end of the age hallelujah glory be to god out of the many popular uh, terms the released and is being repeated is something called the great reset and many of you might have heard of it if not you will hear because they are repeating it all over the news the great reset and the great reset is the name of the 50th annual meeting of the world economic forum the wef held in june 2020 so they were taking care of business while the whole world was in chaos. They went in and it was suggested that we call this the great reset. And this is a time where we could capitalize on this and maximize that which we have planned. Hmm. It, it, it brought together high profile business and political leaders who were all looking for answers. Let me tell you something. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God. Hallelujah. Chosen stewards, please stop looking for the truth and the answers from the people who are not walking in truth and are searching for answers themselves. They don't have the answers and anything they come up with is just temporary. We have to seek the eternal God for eternal answers. Hallelujah. When he answers, he answers forever. Hallelujah. He will not try to change or reset anything. God is about restoration. Hallelujah. A paradigm shift has happened. The shift is being manifested in, the, uh, in an unusual way today. 
and many are being shaken. They Listen to me. The world, they have sped up the process of recruiting, converting, and reconditioning. They, they are moving much faster than they did before. They know and understand the power of repetition. This is one of the methods they are using as a converter to convert those who they can convert. Rep repetition um, creates long-term memory by eliciting or enacting strong chemical interaction at, at the synapse uh, of, of your neurons. That's where neurons are connected to other neurons. So the power of repetition, th that's what they're using. Repetition creates the strongest learning and they know that. You need to know that as well. The power of repetition is in its simplicity. You don't have to do a whole lot. Just get somebody to repeat one word or one sentence. They know what it does to the neurons. They know what it does to the entire internal structure. They understand that. Do you? When a message is heard repeatedly, it's more likely to stay in your, in your mind. The law of repetition states that repeating uh, behavior makes it more powerful. It makes it more powerful. Each suggestion uh, acted upon creates less opposition to success and uh, to a successive su um, suggestion. It, it, it creates less opposition. That's why it's easy for you to wear your mask, watch your hand, watch your, wash your hand, watch your distance because you keep hearing it over and over and over. Then and they, they understand the power of repetition. I wish you would, and I wish you could. They are using this method, method in plain sight, and they are aware of its power to cause change and deceive many. They are aware, are you? They are coming after your mind. They are coming after your children. Guard your mind. Guard the gates of your mind. Guard all your gates from disjunctive views and, and systems of belief that's erroneous. What are you repeatedly saying or doing? Did they get to you? Are you repeatedly declaring the word of God over your life, over your family, over every situation? Or are you saying what they said to say? You have to do all that it takes. Call upon God to rewrite your subconscious mind. Let him go deep on the inside. There are things that you don't even know that's buried there. Hallelujah. Only when a situation comes up, the thing just surfaces. But you have to go to God and say, God, rewrite my subconscious mind. Hallelujah. You have to understand that you are God's salt on the earth. It's time to believe it. And it's time to behave like you have what it takes to make the difference and affect your environment. I have repeatedly declared the word of God over my own life. And I can testify that it worked and it's still working. I said it worked and it is still working. Hallelujah. And of course, dwelling in his presence and building a relationship with him is paramount you must be in a relationship with God and you must learn to develop yourself in him hallelujah Matthew 5 13 to 14 says ye are the salt of the earth but if the salt have lost its savor wherewith shall it be salted it is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. I don't have time to talk about light right now. So maybe another time I will highlight light. But you have to understand that we are called the called the salt of the earth what is salt for us I want to bring it in this context for you today so you will remember hallelujah you are sanctified you are anointed you are loved and you are trusted he sanctified you and anointed 
you to function on the earth effectively because he loves you and he trusts you with his word to release it on the earth. You are the salt of the earth, sanctified, holy, loved, and trusted. You need to declare, I am essential. Hallelujah. The function of salt in the Bible is irrelevant to understanding Hebrew society during the Old Testament and, and uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament period. So it is necessary of, is a necessity of life uh, um, and it was a mineral that was used since uh, ancient times uh, in many cultures uh, as seasoning, as preservative, as uh, disinfectant, a component of cer ceremonial offerings uh, and uh, as a unit of exchange. Salt was very important uh, in those days and you can tell it's important today. The Bible contains numerous references of salt in various contexts. It is used uh, metaphorically to signify permanence, law loyalty, durability, usefulness, value, and purification, among others. Salt is mentioned over 40 times, and even Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. When you look at the Hebrew, and you go into the Strongs, you will see that salt with which food is seasoned, and, and sacrifices are sprinkled, those kinds of uh, saline, or saline, uh, saline matter used, to fertilize land. So it was also important um, for salt to be applied to the land. As a matter of fact, Luke really alludes to that more than Matthew. And when he spoke about it, it wouldn't be good for the, the, the land and it wouldn't even be good uh, for the dung mill. Um, which you're talking about is uh, uh, what we will call manure. Fertilizer. That's it, fertilizer. You know, salt is a symbol of lasting concord because it protects food and preserves it. Okay? But the scripture says here, but if the salt loses its flavor or its savor, how shall it be seasoned? Let me tell you something. If it loses that, it becomes a, let me see, it, it becomes insipid. Without distinctive, interesting, or stimulating qualities. It's, it's vapid and unappealing personality. It's just, it's flat. It's made flat and tasteless. No strength, no flavor, no nothing. It's just there. And the scripture made it clear. It says, if that happens, it is then good for nothing but be to, uh, uh, to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men, by men. And Luke, Luke really alluded to that. And you can check Luke chapter 14, verses 34 to 35. Luke chapter 14, 34 to 35. And he speaks here about the salt. He said, salt is good. But if the salt has lost its flavor, its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? And in 35, this is where he spoke about the dunghill and, and the land. He says, it is neither fit for the land nor for dunghill. But men throw it out. And uh, who has asked to hear, let him hear. In other words, you got to know how essential you are and keep your essentialness intact. Hallelujah. I don't lose that. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So verse 35, uh, it's, it's not good. It's not good for the land. It's not good for the earth. Uh, and that's how significant salt was and still is. It is used, uh, it is so potent that it was able to use uh, to assist the fertilizing of the earth. Uh, and also in those days, they did not have the flushing toilets like we have today. Well, most people have today. Uh, so therefore, they will go and find a heap of dirt and they will do their thing, one or two. Uh, sometimes I guess it might look like three and then they will cover it and put some salt <laughs> salt was very very important to me that's a very important function you know, so land here refers to the soil and the extension of regions including the occupants something about salt though occurred to me while I was cooking yes I cook okay yes I do I don't know if you would want to eat it but I do cook Anyway, so while I was cooking, the salt was quite visible. Just before I put it into the pot, I was able to see the salt. But as I put it in the pot and I started stirring the pot, the salt became invisible because it dissolved. And one would think that, well, the salt wasn't 
good enough or strong enough because it just disappeared. But it came to me that sometimes even when you're not seen, that does not mean you're not fulfilling your purpose. Sometimes when you look as though you've been dissolved, it's because God is setting you up because he has already, he already knows that you have set him in your heart as his, as your resolve, hallelujah, and he will resolve every situation that you could not solve on your own, hallelujah, glory be to God. So anyway, the taste of the meal was enhanced only after I included the salt. It's, it's as though the ingredients were not maximizing their fullest potential without the salt. The, the pot tasted okay, but adding the salt, I got a mm, yummy kind of effect right after adding the salt. It enhanced and helped the other ingredients to maximize their potential. Listen to me, you can have a meal without salt, but you will always sense that something is missing. You will know, you could choose to have it without salt, but I know when you add the salt, you will want to continue eating and you might even eat more you will have more of it because the salt has the potential hallelujah to not just make the thing look good taste good or be good or preserve it but it has the potential to keep you wanting more hallelujah declare it over your life Jesus said that you are the salt of the earth sanctified anointed loved and trusted you have to declare I am essential anyway as I continued with preparation for this message, the Holy Spirit said context. Now, I know context is critical. Context is critical. If your context is inaccurate, you might think you're thinking accurately. But be careful that you are not just rearranging your ignorance. Well, if you think like that, then your conclusion on the matter will be inaccurate if that is so if you think like that then your conclusion of the matter will be inaccurate when I heard context I decided to look again and God's been saying that look again listen again look again observe 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 and a, a plethora of thoughts ent entered my mind I started to see a key reason why Jesus called us salt on the earth and I don't know I mean others have preached on it and they have seen other things but I'm just going to share with you what he downloaded to me when he told me look again he said context and I looked again you see in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 very popular verse isn't it and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the cattle over the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth keep tracking with me now dominion refers to power authorization and rule now look at salt it is powerful in historical and metaphorical terms I was led to synchronize the dominion given to us and the intentionality of Jesus stating that we are the salt of the earth. Because you can't just create man and say, let, uh, let us make man in our image and our likeness and let them have dominion. And then later on, Jesus comes and says, you are the salt of the earth. And we just minimize the thing. That just don't make sense to me. Because Jesus is consistent. And he has to be consistent with what the Father already established. So I saw the potency and the power of his intentional expression. He referred to us as something that has the power and the potential to affect and impact anything. Hallelujah. And everything that it touches when used for its primary purpose. Hallelujah. What am I saying to us today? If you could just take a minute and just be who you are called to be and be used for your primary purpose, then this earth will, this earth will be impacted by the power of God. Hallelujah. Things will turn around. Things will shift for you and your family. Things will shift for the kingdom citizens, the chosen steward. God don't make mistakes. He's not the type of God that errs. You have to understand that you are sanctified, anointed, loved, and trusted to impact earth. You are essential. Come on, declare it. Repeat it. I am essential. Essential to who? Essential to God. For what? To impact earth. Hallelujah. With what? With power. And effectiveness. 
and influence. You're a kingdom citizen for goodness sake. Salty kingdom citizen. Hallelujah. Salt does not adjust to its environment. Don't feel because I, I put it in the pot and it disappeared, it adjusted to the environment. No, it didn't. When I placed that salt in the pot, the salt dominated the environment. Salt dominates its environment. Are you with me somebody? Hallelujah. The effectiveness of salt is dependent on its volume. Because I was thinking, had I put one grain of salt in the pot, well, I don't think much was going to happen. At least I would not have been able to detect it. But when you look at one grain of salt compared to one pound, wow, it makes a big difference. No, no, I did not put a pound of salt in the pot. Okay, please work with me here. But one grain to one pound, that's a big difference. What the, the amount of salt that I put in the pot was enough to affect the entire pot. So it depends on how many grains come together. They will come together for a particular purpose, on purpose, with purpose. And cause a great effect and have a great impact. So I kept looking and then the Holy Spirit said, My bride would be more effective if every grain comes together to be used. We cannot be scattered and be as effective as we were predestined to be. If every grain comes together, that we will be more potent and more powerful. They will see the true power of the church, of the bride, of the body of Christ. Every grain has its own potential and power. Yes, I know you got some stuff in you. I got stuff in me. The Holy Spirit is in us and we could do things and we are trained to do different things. But I tell you, one can put a thousand a flight and two can put ten thousand. There is power in coming together. Volume. Every grain of salt has its own potential and power. But he said, my plan involves the uniting of the grains. That could preach by itself. The uniting of the grains. That's why he said to us, it's the rise of the remnant. Hallelujah. And that includes all of us. His bride. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, declare. I'm sanctified, anointed, loved, and trusted. I am the salt of the earth. Hallelujah. I am essential. Hallelujah. First Corinthians. I think that's what it is. Yes, it is. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. It says, For as the body is one and has one and has many members. I want you to get this. Let me just start again. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. It says, For as the body is one. And has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. You see, Jesus prayed in, uh, in John, and verse, uh, John 17, uh, 20. It says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me, though... Uh, Though, uh, sorry, through their words. Uh, let me just get that one more time for you. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their words. And verse 21 of John 17 says, That they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that you sent me. God is calling all the grains together. Don't be a grain of salt by yourself. Let's come together. Let's unite. There is power in unity. Hallelujah. The church of body of Christ is too scattered. That's why the world is just looking around. It's like where is the church? Where is this God that they have been talking about for so long? Because you're trying to be one grain of salt. They might miss your effectiveness. But you come together, hallelujah, 10,000, tens of thousands would be impacted. There is so much more to salt 
than what meets the eye. Saul doesn't say or do anything in its form. All Saul knows is how to be what it is. What is it? Salt. That's all it knows. It knows to be salt. When it goes into any environment, it does not compete with what's there. It's not afraid to stand out. It's just, it, it just goes in and dominates. I mean, it's, Saul goes in like, dun, 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 dun. mission possible. It's salt. I'm here. You know, that's his motto, mission possible. Saul just be, he, it's just salt. I've never heard salt being something else. Even if you mix it, salt will remain salt mixed with something else. But salt would not change into the other thing. Oh, hallelujah. And when it's dissolved, you still get salt in a different form. You, you got to know, even when you go through your trials, I'm trying to talk to you. Even when you're going through your testing and you feel dissolved, you feel melted down, you still have the potential, the, 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 the potency of what you have been placed in you from the very beginning. Hallelujah. You got to learn that even if, if you are dissolved, be determined to affect your environment. Starting with your eternal man. Come on, declare, I am salt, the salt, the, the salt of the earth, sanctified, anointed, loved, and trusted. I am essential. Salt maximizes its potential and power by just being. You need to just be. It goes in our salt and is prepared to have great impact, even if it means dissolving to get maximum result. You have to be determined to do whatever it takes to get maximum results so that God will get the glory, the honor, and the praise. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Salt must be in direct contact. Hallelujah. With what it will imminently impact you need to understand you need to be in direct contact and for us we also understand that there is no distance in prayer that is direct contact we have the authority we also have the authorization we can come boldly before the throne of God we can release his word from one nation to another but at least let's start with our nation hallelujah let's start with our homes let's start with our community let's start here first and then you know that your effectiveness, hallelujah, will be re recognized as you release it with power and great faith. Salt permeates every location upon arrival and contact. Declare it. I'm the salt of the earth. Sanctified, anointed, loved, and trusted. I am essential. I understand the power of repetition. I have been declaring I'm above and escalating. And I tell you, if I was not declaring that and declaring it from a place of truth with understanding that I'm only above in him and he is the one that always takes me higher. If I was not, when certain situations came, I would have been all the way down, dissolved without any effectiveness. My God. <laughs> but like salt, you were sent to affect and impact your environment, earth. You were sent to impact earth. He said, let them have dominion over all the earth. That's impact. Your form is different from salt. I agree. Because I don't look like salt. And I don't think you look like salt. But although your form is different from salt, you must do what salt did just be just be who you are be who you were formed predestined and conditioned to be salt has a built-in determination to have great impact wherever it goes you must also be determined to have great impact wherever you go i understand it's really tough right now it's quite challenging for many and i might stand here and you might see me all dressed up thinking that everything is a-okay and it's fine when i declare it in the name of jesus it is but all the details might not work how i would want it but it will work for my 
my good. It has worked for my good and it is working for my good. And I'm here to tell you today, it's going to work for your good. Why? Because you are the salt of the earth. You are sanctified, anointed, loved, and trusted. You are essential. They want to reset. That's what they want. But God wants to restore. He wants to restore you to your rightful position, your rightful place in him. Joint heir, hallelujah. He wants to restore you from the very beginning. Hallelujah, glory be to God. They want to change what is set. God wants you to align yourself with what he has set. God, God, God said, don't stop being salt. <laughs> don't, don't stop. You don't want to turn into sugar. Don't worry. When salt is mixed with sugar, you don't get satisfaction from, from any. <laughs> Mix some salt with sugar and put it in your mouth. You, you, you don't even know what you're tasting. <laughs> don't worry. The Holy Spirit is enough sweetness on the inside of you. You'll be who you, who you have been called to be, the salt of the earth. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse, 4, verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10 it says, And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. You see, you don't have to worry. God's got this. Even if you feel you're a bit dissolved right now. You are in a war. But you must not allow the war in. They're trying to reset. Don't allow the war in. All internal struggles is as a result of what you've allowed in. Because God did not put any internal struggle when he said, let us make man. Nothing like that <sighs> was breathing us. Nothing like that is what you have embraces what you allowed in don't be fighting so much that you lose hope and sight of victory don't do it you were conditioned to triumph you are complete in him because he completes you with his completeness that is complete in the beginning God conditioned you to triumph in the beginning God conditioned you to triumph. Being triumphant is an innate condition. It's your imminent victorious outcome. The spiritual tectonic plate has shifted. Pay attention. The divine crust of the kingdom of God is aligning in the hearts of mankind. Hallelujah. There is no denying Jesus and his imminent return. You got to be ready. You know, I have a question. What's your reason? Why are you doing what you're doing now? Why are you saying what you're saying now? Why are you going where you're going now? I beseech you by the mercies of God. Stop behaving like you've been programmed by the world and not conditioned by God. You are, you are in the world, but you're not of the world. So the world cannot have a hold on you. You are the salt of the earth. You got to affect the earth. You are sanctified, anointed, loved, and trusted. You are essential. Declare it over your life, I am essential, essential to God to impact the earth. You can learn something from everything and from everyone around you. You can. You have to decide what is profitable to you and what you want to take in. Don't view your mistakes like an incurable disease. You just missed a take in life. What you need to do is Dust it off, repent, rise up, and move forward. Some people are committed to negativity and depression as though they have a marriage ceremony going on to be negative and depressed. You, you, every time you come around them, what's happening? Well, um, this is a celebration of depression. <laughs> My God. Listen, it doesn't matter how much 
good surrounds them. They, they always look for the one negative or the one thing that cannot, or, or, or cannot help them and it will just get them depressed. But even them, and if that's some of you I'm talking to today, know that you're sanctified, anointed, loved, and trusted. And know that you are essential. I declare it over your life. Many have gotten depressed and they have lost their identity in Christ. It's like God knows who you are, but you don't know who you are in him and to him. It's like it, it, you don't know anymore. And it's not that I don't understand. I have had many in my life, many things that happened in my life where depression came knocking. It came knocking. And unfortunately, I allowed it in a few times. And of course, eventually, I served it an eviction notice. <laughs> I did allow it in, but I served it a, a, an eviction notice. And some of you need to do that. So it, it's not like I don't understand. And I'm, I'm just up here preaching to you. And I don't understand what you've been through. I don't understand what you're going through. I might not understand it the same way you are going through it. But you are listening to someone who experienced many, many of what you will call bad things. I will call them challenges. And, and someone needs to hear this. Some of you heard it before. But somebody listening today, especially today, you need to hear this. Because you've been going through a really rough time. And you've just lost it all. I grew up in a broken family. I was poverty stricken. I was bullied. I was abused by relatives. I attempted suicide. I had multiple surgeries. I've experienced failed relationship. I went through divorce. My biological dad, I never knew because he died when I was almost two. My stepdad and my mother both died in the same year, just nine months apart. Just recently, some close relatives and friends died. My ministry, my God-given ministry, experienced human and financial exodus. I've been misunderstood. I've been lied on. I've been betrayed. And of course, there is the ongoing effects of this current pandemic. And that was just the tip of the iceberg. Yes, there's more. But it will take a long time to tell you all of it. If looked at from a fleshly perspective, I could justify having a negative attitude and being in, in a depressive state. I could throw in the towel and just give up. And there are many who are just wishing and waiting that that would happen, that I would just give up. Uh-oh, sorry. That's not going to happen. God's mercies kept me so I wouldn't let go. As a chosen steward, a kingdom citizen, I am still here and I am still standing and I stand strong in him. From the ashes I rose, in the valley I stood, through the fire I walked, in the dryness I continue to blossom. And if I could do it, then you could do it too. With the help of God. Come on, wipe your tear, dust the dust off. Get up and lift your voice unto him. I am comforted by uh, Isaiah chapter 43 verses 2 to 3. It says here, fear not. For I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. Hallelujah. You are mine. And then he says, girl, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, hallelujah, you shall not be burned. Hallelujah. Nor shall the flames scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. 
I'm comforted by that. And I want to comfort you today. He's got you. He, he, he got you. He got you in the palm of his hands. Even when it looked like you were defeated or you feel defeated. God will pull you up and he will pull you out. You'll know him. Hallelujah. You'll get to know him as your mind regulator. You will get to know him as a lifter of your head. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. You'll get to know him as your present helper. Not just your present helper but your very present helper. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Many times I felt certain things happening with me and in my life but I got to know him as my spiritual chisel Amen. he made something out of nothing <laughs> I had to go through it he chiseled and I had to chill out he's my whatever whenever however he's my forever and he can be yours as well. Your whatever, your whenever, your however, and your forever. He's my God. He's your God. He's my king. He's your king. And he's sovereign. He rules. Open your mouth and declare, I am sanctified, anointed, loved, and trusted. I am the salt of the earth. I am essential. Listen. And listen to me carefully. This is not the time to be caught licking. Don't be caught licking your wounds. That's not the kingdom way. You might be knocked down, but you ain't dead. Don't, don't behave as though the bite got so deep on the inside that you got to be seen licking it. You might have a scar, but you will stand victorious. Get up, stand up, exercise your authority as a kingdom citizen. If I could do it, you can. If I could have gone through all that I went through and still be able to do that, then you can. And you can do it through Christ. You can do all things through him. Hallelujah. Apply the blood of Jesus. His blood still works. How do I know? I know because it worked for me and it's still working for me. Release your faith for whatever is coming. Hallelujah. At you, whatever it, that's coming at you will flee multiple ways. God will quench every fiery dart. I declare it over your life according to his word. He is your shield, your buckler. He's your fence and defense. So he will block you and defend you at the same that's the kind of God we serve uh, come on somebody uh, look at that kind of God the one true and only God his unconditional love has the power to reach you on the highest mountain and in the lowest valley. You can rely on the strength of his blood. His blood still works. His eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches over you. How do I know that? Because he watches over me. And I know sometimes I don't even deserve to be watched over. But he loves me so much that his love, hallelujah, covered a multitude of sin. Hallelujah. And he watched over that so he could watch over me oh come on <laughs> hallelujah you see I'm sanctified anointed loved and trusted I am essential and so are you so are you he is so much God that he'll make a dry path in the sea so that you won't drown he'll cause hungry lions to do an overnight fast so you won't be eaten He'll cause fire to lose its consuming power long enough, hallelujah, for you to walk around and walk out, hallelujah. He'll cause the, 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 the filthiest water in the river to produce healing properties so you can dip black name and dip seven times. Oh, come on, that's a hey, uh, dip. He'll cause kings to promote you to being second in command while you're in captivity. Jesus. He'll cause the wilderness to form a path of directions for you to just walk on through. 
He'll cause deserts to produce rivers. You're feeling thirsty. You're thirsty and in the desert. Watch God. He's going to produce some water for you. So you will not dry up. You're going to keep walking. You do like David. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because there's a run and stop me. Comfort me. He is so much God that he raised people from the dead, including himself. Sanctified, anointed, loved, and trust. That's you. Salt of the earth. You are essential. It doesn't matter how bad it gets. God is always present. If it didn't kill you, then it didn't have the power or the authorization to. It will all work for your good because God is good. Sanctified, anointed, loved, and trusted. That's you. That's me. We are the salt of the earth. We are essential. Trouble won't last always on God. Intentionally set your gaze. Align your thoughts and your ways to keep, hallelujah, the keeper will keep you in all your days. Jesus called you salt of the earth. It's time for the rise of the remnant. God will impact the earth through his bride. That's you. That's me. He is going to do it. You are conditioned to triumph. We are conditioned to triumph. We are. You are. I am. We are all essential in these last days to impact earth. You. I'm talking to you. You are the salt of the earth. You are sanctified. Come on, somebody, say sanctified. You are sanctified. That's it. I want you to say it like you mean it. You are anointed. Say, I am anointed. I'm loved and I'm trusted. Sanctified, anointed, loved, and trusted. You are the salt of the earth. You are essential.